What I want to talk about today is uh, providing best-in-class storage speed across the AI lifecycle. So we have a lot of co-customers together. Uh, we work on a lot of NVIDIA SuperPod deployments together as well. And the concept here is throughout the different stages of the AI lifecycle, you're going to have different data requirement needs. You're going to have different compute requirement needs. And the concept here is the, the mesh between what DDN can provide from a storage perspective and what Run AI can provide from a GPU orchestration and allocation perspective is uh, sort of the mesh that you know customers and end users need to be successful. So I'm actually going to go through a, a demo for most of the setup and talk through some of the capabilities and, and how it overlaps in a lot of customer settings. So what you see on screen here is uh, an overview environment of one of our demos. And the concept here is we'll sit on top of uh, a a large amount of compute generally. So whether it's DGX nodes, whether it's GPU servers from another vendor, basically the concept here is we'll sit on top of all of that compute, we'll pool all of that compute so it can be allocated for different workloads by different users. So we have this large amount of compute, at Run AI, specifically what we do is we provide a scheduling and orchestration layer where we can basically come in and provide different scheduling priorities and policies based off of the workloads that the end users are submitting. So whether you're doing interactive work in something like a Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, or PyCharm, uh, we'll give you on-demand access to resources when you request those. Or if you're training either on a single node or multi-node, um, on a, a wide variety of frameworks. So you can support basically MPI, uh, you can support PyTorch Lightning as well as Ray. Those all work out of the box on top of the platform. And when you have a lot of those large scale distributed training frameworks, it's, it's very, very imperative that you have the high speed storage to feed those particular workloads as they're running. They're very dependent on getting data into the GPUs as fast as possible. The other thing that we also support with the platform is, is inferencing, whether it's on CPUs or GPUs. So the concept there basically is wherever you're at within that AI lifecycle, whether it's data prep, interactive training, or inference, Run AI can be that piece that provides you that on-demand access to compute. So your users are able to come in and submit their workloads and, and get access to compute. So the way we actually break it down a little bit further is we can get really unique with the compute that we sit on top of. So what we have the capability to do is segment the actual hardware that's running within the cluster. So if you have a mix of GPU types, or if you have data that may sit local to a particular node, we have the full ability to do contextual based scheduling. So if you have some storage that's local on a particular node, or if you need to run a workload on a specific GPU type, you'll have the ability to do that very easily with the platform. So that's the idea here of this node pools capability. In this particular demo setup, we're segmenting the actual compute based off of the GPU type. So we have some A100 GPUs and some H100 GPUs. The next piece after we segment it from a hardware perspective is we'll come in and look at the project perspective. So now we have this large pool of compute that we want users to come in and basically get access to. What we can do is segment it now into projects. So our projects here go from users A through D. Um, a project can be an individual, a team, uh, and it can be a whole business unit. The concept isn't necessarily the, the project name is important. The important piece here is what's on the right here, their, their GPU quota. So the GPU quota is essentially what we're saying, what any of these users or teams can get at any point in time. So user A is always guaranteed their 16 GPUs, user B gets their eight, and user C and D get their four. So the concept there is if user A isn't leveraging all of their GPUs, we allow other users to come in and use that compute that otherwise would be sitting idle. So we don't want them to be limited from the data perspective. We also don't want them to be starred for compute when it comes to a GPU perspective. So that's the concept here of Run. It, it provides the uh, better mapping of the researchers, their workloads, and then the compute requirements of their workloads. So it can be more of a, an on-demand fashion and it'll drive better utilization of the underlying hardware. What we can actually do from a, a project perspective as well is provide uh, quota management based off of those node pools, right? So if you have users that want priority access to the, the GPUs like the H100s uh, and then just opportunistic access to the A100s, you have the full ability as the administrator to dictate who gets what compute and who's guaranteed what compute at any point in time. 
the other piece that I'll walk through here real quick is you can see basically on the overview dashboard here, you know, user A, we, we talked about they're guaranteed their 16 GPUs. You can see they're only allocated 12, right? And user C, they're actually only guaranteed four, but they're actually running in an over quota capacity right now and leveraging eight GPUs. And that's part of what we do from that scheduling and orchestration piece. We allow users to go over quota so we can better optimize that underlying compute. What happens if user A comes in and wants to run a workload now when all of the compute is fully saturated? So I'll come over to my workspaces tab here and, and walk through the creation of a workspace. Generally a, a workspace, you can kind of think of it as an interactive job where an end user can come in and work with either a Jupyter Notebook or VS Code or a large number of tools that we support out of the box today. Um, so I'll go through the whole workspace creation process so you can see it. And when you create your workspace, there's basically three components that are included. You have the underlying environment or image. So I'll click on that real quick just so you can see uh, a quick concept here of, of what we support when it comes to the particular tools. Um, so there's a large number of tools that we support out of the box today. So you can run things like Jupyter, MLflow, RStudio, uh, VS Code, and MATLAB right from the platform and connect to it right from the platform as well. So it's no longer, hey, let's start this job and then figure out how to connect to it. We take care of all of those pieces for the end users. And then we also support a wide variety of experiment tracking tools like TensorBoard, weights and biases, and, and comment as well. So I'll actually come back here real quick and, and continue creating my workspace. I'll choose my uh, underlying environment as a, a Jupyter demo image here. The other components of your workspace are going to be the compute resources that you want to assign to the workload. One of the unique things that we can do at Run AI is provide fractional GPU capability. So what that allows you to do is segment or slice any NVIDIA GPU and have your workload running on the subset of that GPU. And then when it comes to all of these AI workloads, the critical component is going to be the data source, right? So what we have the ability to do within workspaces is mount data sources from different locations. So whether you have your DDN storage configured as some type of network file share, or whether it's mounted locally on any of these hosts, you have the ability as an administrator to make all of these data sources available to the end users, uh, as well as the ability for end users to configure the data sources to load into their workloads as well. So it's really great if you have large data sets uh, mounted into your fast storage, the administrators can make those large data sets available to different teams and different users very easily through the platform. And that's essentially the idea of the integration, right? You have the ability to create your workspaces or any of your other workloads and leverage that DDN storage backbone to provide the, the best in class sort of data loading into the AI workloads. So you can keep the GPUs fed and provide sort of the, the best performance for those workloads. So I'll go ahead and create this workspace here real quick. And generally the concept here, right, is the, the cluster is fully saturated. When this workload comes in, what we actually do as a platform is, is we look across all of the compute, we see that we don't have half of a GPU free within the cluster, and what we'll actually do is we'll, we'll look for a workload that's running in an over quota capacity. So we'll actually identify that one of the workloads from user C, we send a queue to one of the workloads from user C to pause it and preempt it so we can save its current state. And then we'll actually push it back into the pending queue so we can pass the compute back to the end user who's, who it's guaranteed to. So that'll occur in, in just a second here. And then generally the concept here is, is once that, that notebook is up and running, then the user can come in and basically connect to their particular notebook, you know, start loading in your data set, start, start analyzing the data. So I'll come back over to the workspaces here. You can see now we have the workloads back into the pending queue. Um, you can see that workload from user C is now paused and preempted. And in a second, you'll see the, the GPUs sort of reflect that, hey, we've actually scaled back a little bit, but we have that half of a GPU allocated for user A. So now the workspace is up and running. As an end user, it's really easy to connect into whatever tool that you want to launch. So whether any of those tools like VS Code, Jupyter, et cetera, that we add in that previous page, you can basically come in and easily connect into any of those tools in a new browser tab once you connect into that tool. So that's the general idea here, right? It's, it's the idea of matching the, the fine-grained access to the compute for the end users and giving them the ability to load in their data sets, whether they're doing anything from interactive work uh, to large-scale distributed training.
So thank you, everybody. Um, appreciate DDN for, for having us today. And uh, we have a booth over on the far side. If you want to come and learn a little bit more, just look for the big pink Run AI logo and, and everybody standing in pink. And even the carpet of our booth is pink, so you can't miss it. So thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.